Hi, today we'll create this simple yet very nice looking main menu for your good old game. Here I have my empty Godot project. Let's start by creating a new scene. Right click here, new scene and let's call it main menu. Make sure to select user interface root type. Now we have a clear slate. Let's start with adding a button. Click this plus button to create new child node. Today we'll be interested only in the green colored control nodes. To add a button, click on base button and then select this button. Ok, it's quite small. I can resize it like that. As a reminder, you might see that these are the borders of our scene. I've increased the contrast for just a second to make them more visible. Now I would like to have this button in the center. I can try to move it manually like that, but it's better to use anchor presets. Click this green circle at the top and select middle center anchor preset. That way our button lands in the middle and whenever we launch our game it will be always placed in the middle of the screen. I think it's time to give our button some love. First, let's change its text to start game and then time for some styling. I will go to the theme overrides right here. Uh, let's maybe start with the font size because it's quite small. I will make it a bit bigger. Okay, like that. Then let's modify the background. Go to styles. Here we have a few different styles, but for now we'll stick with normal. Click on this empty text and go with new style box flat. First of all, I like to modify its background, so let's change the color to white. Then I'd like to add some rounded corners. I will maybe zoom in so you'll see what's going on. I will change them to 16 maybe. Okay. And finally, I will add a shadow. The only thing left is to change color of the text because currently it's unreadable. Let's go here to theme overrides colors, font color and let's stick with black. Ok, I think that's a nicely looking button. Let's press play and check out how it looks like in the game. Here is how it looks like in the play mode, but the small problem is that when I try to hover mouse over it, uh, the style changes and also when I click it's completely different. We'll get back to making proper button styles in just a second, but in the meanwhile let's work on our main menu layout. I would like to have three buttons in total. Let's duplicate this start game, move it a bit down and change its text to options. Then I will duplicate one more time and do the same this time exit. You may have noticed that these buttons are not aligned, let's use a container that will help us with that. In the scene tab select all three options using the shift key, then right click on them and select reparent to new node. Here in the control nodes we need to find container, box container, vertical box container, create. That created a node parent that automatically stacks all the options. We can now resize it and move it around on the scene. I think it's also a good way to center it on the scene as with the first button. So I will click once more on anchor presets and go with center option. To make buttons bigger so that they will resize to full height of this container, let's once again select all of them using the shift key on the keyboard. Then in the inspector, go to layout, container sizing and enable expand next to the vertical option. If you'd like to increase the separation between the buttons, in the box container, go to theme overrides, constraints and add some separation between the buttons. Time for the background. I think it would be nice to show game screenshot behind the buttons. I have this one for example. 
By the way, this screenshot is from the game I've been creating in my free Godot course. You can enroll on my website, where you'll find all required information about where to start and learn about my Godot-related content. Click link in the description and learn Godot for free. Anyway, let's take this image and import it to Godot. To add it to the scene, I'll use Panel Component. Right-click on Main Menu Node, Add New Child Node, and maybe this time let's search for Panel, this green one. Panel is basically a big rectangle container that can be filled in with either color or an image. First, let's resize it to the full screen. Instead of dragging manually, we can once more use anchor presets, so click here, and this time, instead of center, let's go with this full rect preset. Next, time for the image fill. In the inspector, go to theme overrides, styles, and in panel, select new style box texture. Now, simply take our background from the file system and drag it here to the texture field. If you want to make this image a bit darker, go to Modulate, Color, and select Dark Color to decrease our image brightness. Now the only problem is that our image is on top of all the buttons. To change that, in the Scene Hierarchy, find our panel and drag it above the box container. Now let's not forget about the game title. If you have an image, you can create new panel or texture rect to add it to the scene. But I will use just text with a nice font. To add a text to your scene, search for label, set its text to the name of your game. Let's go with Godot Adventure. Now, as usual, it's time to resize it and move it around here above the buttons. I think the best way would be to use anchor presets once more and select again center one, then just drag it above the buttons, but you can notice that while holding shift, you can do that in the straight line. So I will drag it right here. Then I will change its horizontal and vertical alignment to center. And finally, make the text a bit bigger. Go to the theme overrides, font sizes, and make font size bigger like that. You see, I'm not a fan of this default font, so let's go to the Tafont website or whatever page you're using for your fonts and find some kind of a typeface that will be fun for our game. I think that this font is quite fine. Before downloading, notice what's the license of this font. In this case, it's public domain, so it's safe to use. After the download, you will have this zip file. Let's unzip it and take this TTF file and drag it to Godot. That created a text font asset, which we can use for our label. In the label, go to the theme overrides, this time fonts, and just drag in our font to this field. I will once more experiment with the font size, and maybe also add a bit of a shadow, so in colors, go to font shadow color, it will be black, and in the constraints, let's make shadow offset, okay? And I think that created a nice pixelated shadow for our game. Now, I think the buttons are a bit too high, they should have more space. If I would select the box container and try to move it, there will be an issue because Godot will be confused that I can't move buttons inside the container. To overwrite the movement, go once again to the box container and this time move, but while holding the Option or Alt key on your keyboard. If you want to keep the movement in the straight line, as always, keep holding Shift, that will lock the axis of the movement. This main menu already looks great, uh, but we still have a problem with the button styles on hover. Let's fix it now. You might remember that we only configured the normal style of the button, but all other styles are kept with their defaults. Now it's time to override them. In the scene hierarchy, I will select all three buttons with the shift key. In the inspector, once more, let's find theme overrides styles. 
And now let's duplicate our normal style to hover. So right click on it, click copy and paste it on hover and do the same on pressed. That way we have the same style whenever the button is normal, mouse hovered or pressed. We can test it out in the game actually. And you can see that the button stays the same. There is a problem with the font. We'll fix that later. Uh, but that is not intended. We want to have a small color tint on mouse uh, hover. So let's fix that. Click on hover style and change its color. But there is a problem. You may notice that when changing the color, it also changes the normal color of the button. That is because while copying, we've duplicated the link to the same style box uh, and they have shared settings. To make them unique, just right click on hover and select make unique. Now I can freely change the hover color. I will make it a bit darker. And now the same thing with pressed, right click, make unique and make it even darker to represent the click action. You can see that our buttons have proper colors on mouse hover and darker color on click. We have still two problems. Uh, the fonts have incorrect color. We'll fix that in a second, but we also have this weird outline after clicking an option. To fix outline, just click on focus and instead of empty, select new style box empty. That will remove this outline on click. To change text colors, go to colors and here we have font pressed color, hover color and focus color. I will make all of them black. Now text behaves correctly and we don't have this weird outline after the click. Finally, before we go, I would like to quickly make some of the buttons interactable. First, we need to create a script. Click on the main menu node and click add script. I will keep the default create. Time to connect the buttons with the script. In Godot we do that using signals. Go back to the scene, click on the first button and here above the inspector select node tab. Here we have a lot of signals. Think about them like actions. They will trigger whenever a certain event will happen. Here we are interested in the press signal which obviously is triggered whenever player clicks on a button. Double click pressed now select a node which has the script, in this case main menu, and name our button function. I will call it on start pressed. Now in the script we have this function which we'll use in just a second, but first let's do the same for all the buttons. I will select second button, double click on pressed, main menu, and this time I will call it on settings pressed. And finally, the third button, double click on pressed and call it on exit pressed. Perfect. To make sure that those buttons are working, let's add a print function to print out which button has been pressed in the console. In the on start pressed, I will type print start pressed settings pressed exit pressed while coding please make sure that you have a correct tab indentations. If you want, you will have an errors and the code won't work. To fix that, just use tab key on your keyboard to indent the code as you can see on the video. Now let's press play and test if our buttons are working. You can see that whenever we press a button, a new console log appears with the correct string. Before we go, I will implement logic for two buttons. In on exit pressed, let's quit the game. To do that, type get tree, quit. That will just quit our game. And in on start pressed, I would like to change the scene. So type get tree, change scene to file. And here select your scene path. I have this example uh, scene level one, which I created earlier. So just select it from this suggestion and it will auto change to this scene. I won't be covering the options menu, but please let me know down in the comments if you'd like to learn how to create one. Other than that, our main menu looks perfect. Thanks a lot to my awesome patrons that support this channel. See you soon.